Yes, send her a remix of Dark Souls 3 by Rotaka. Folks, you know what that song means. Oh, I sure yes. do. All right. I'm glad we all do because I forgot. No, I didn't. Yeah. No. <laughs> Sorry. I used that like three <laughs> rounds in a row now. Yeah. yeah. Just, Why are we here? It's no. not a great joke. I <laughs> should stop doing yeah. that. I don't know. But it's Friday night. It's time for Insert Credits. It's yeah, true. 57? 7. 57. Yeah. Okay. 57. 57. 57. Triplicate. 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 We did it. <laughs> yeah. We are the best. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what that means, but please yeah. do explain. Well, we got one E, a second one, and a third. And we stapled them together. Okay. So it's in triplicate. Mm. Yep. E3? Yeah. All right. <laughs> we'll be talking about that a bunch. Well, not yeah. talking about it so much as listing everything that has come out of E3, pretty much. The the electronics on... Entertainment Expo. They've been stuck in the third one for a really long time now. The expo? The expo part? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. It's a big shit show. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And it's been getting more awkward, it seems, as of late. Yeah. Like, they're not, I mean, they're good show people and all that, but it's like, all right, show us something of value, please. Yeah. Well, I mean, EA's conference was cringeworthy, so. Oh, of course. As it is wont to be. Yeah. But. Yeah. Drink. <laughs> all right all right final join in all right uh, it's just an we, incidental drink there but okay we killed off 100 milliliters of whiskey though 200 yeah. 200 oh well, well, they're I both finish, gone after i finished this one nice yeah yeah it's, it's two oh, 100 milliliters isn't a whole lot yeah <laughs> it's no not, this stuff burns so good though it does burn very good guess i'm just gonna have to go get some johnny walker red after this <laughs> Why not? Yeah. yeah. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm Mr. Bond. And I'm Tormod. And I'm Saxon. It's Friday night. The 15th? 15th. Friday. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> Shut up. Two <laughs> weeks, we'll be in a new house. Two weeks, I won't have to think about that fucking condo anymore. Yeah, right? <laughs> Excitement. Grats. Yes, Grats. thank you very much. So, by this time next month, hopefully going to be streaming again. Hopefully, I'll have everything mm -hmm. in line to do that. But, yeah. We need to Until get then, a... this is the last one. Just saying. Yeah. We need to get you a TG on board. Yeah. Of your own. Because <laughs> Eon took hers back. <laughs> I, was about to say, I thought you already had one, but no, yeah. I guess you were No, that was it. Eon's spare. Ah. Uh, no, that, that was just the, the trial of the drug. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. First hit's free. Yeah, yep. exactly. She's going to let you have a little bit, and then you get hooked. <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, uh. yeah, yeah, I'm going to have to do that. Supposedly, it's not terribly expensive, so I'm going to have to be like, okay, how much do I cough up into whom? Yeah. I'm and, thinking and it's less than 300 bucks, though. Mm, you find Which, honestly, for an arcade board... That sounds about right. Yeah, for TGM1. Like, the other ones start, like, shooting up almost logarithmically. Ugh. You got to so, find somebody to, like, handle the, the Yahoo auction, like Yahoo Japan well, or something. Well, actually, remember that one dude who ended up bidding on all of them and winning them all? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's basically just selling them now. <laughs> I think there's still some left. Wow. So I oh might just boy. be like, eh, th th yeah. please, thanks. I need that. <laughs> hey, buddy. Yeah. So I'm going to have to get in contact with whoever that person is, but I'm sure Eon will be glad to give me contact info once the time comes. But... Until we have a bunch then. of other things going on. We oh, do. Yes. First of all, housekeeping. Yes. Round 58 on the 13th of July. Sounds right. Round 59 on the 17th of August. Mm, yes. That's what I have down, anyways. I, I, I hit the button to change months twice, and it only went once, and I was like, that doesn't line up with oh, the Friday. Nice. But it does. Round 60, the 14th of September. Yes. Uh, Round 61, the 12th of October. Mm, really? I think so. That's what I have marked down. I don't have it on the calendar at all, interestingly. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it doesn't show up as something you put in at all. So, Oh, that's sure. right. I've only got it on the on my QFSG calendar. That's why. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I was like, hmm. <laughs> okay, and then we didn't, we didn't go beyond that, which is fine, yeah. which is fine. We don't need to work that out now because we got tons of shit to go over. Yeah. Around the yeah, world. My mm -hmm. goodness, before we get to the uh, everybody... Uh, Kind of falling over themselves over E3. Yeah, yeah. Let's just do all of the other stuff first. Yeah, Epic okay. is putting up one hundred million dollars in cash and prizes for the first year of Fortnite for their esports push. Oh, that Epic? <laughs> yeah, not. No, no, no. Yeah, Epic Games. Excuse me, uh, Epic okay. Games. That's a lot of money and oh, yeah. a lot of stuff. I can imagine that they're just pulling it in, though. Oh, so, I'm sure they are. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just gonna have to regurgitate that cash machine. So, 
That's for, one way to do it. For a game that's a copy of PUBG. <coughs> Excuse me. Tough cough. Didn't <laughs> Fortnite come first? Yeah, I mm, want to say that could maybe. be. Maybe. I think their Battle Royale mode was after PUBG, though. Oh, so. that's, yeah, that could be true. Yeah. Oh, let's see here. Fortnite's initial release date was on July 25th of 2017, whereas Zero. PUBG's. Oh, never mind. March 23rd of 2017. Aha. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. Although, was that their, the full release of PUBG, or is that. It's they whatever were early Wikipedia access. had linked to okay. Google search results. That was, fair, fair, I, fair. Yeah, I think that was like the initial release because they were stuck in alpha for like way longer than that. Oh, yeah. I remember so. that being a thing for a while before it suddenly became popular. <laughs> yeah. People yeah. on Wikipedia are like, whatever, and alpha <laughs> counts as a release now <laughs> because people are being stupid about the word alpha. Yeah. I mean,. Steam. People yeah. don't know what alpha or beta or release <laughs> means. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I, I also don't like the, you know, um, kind of the trend of like super extended alphas where, where they're kind of using it as a guise for, you know, things being buggy. It's all like, ah, well, it's alpha. For free testing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because that's, that's totally a thing now. Open alpha. Yeah. Hmm. Well, only as long as people put up with it, I guess. Yeah. And people seem to want to put up with it, so whatever. Yeah. I uh, remember how we were talking last time about Megamins getting the re-releases on cartridge form? Oh, yeah. Yes. It's happening to Double Dragon now as well. Oh, yeah, buddy. Specifically, a re-release of Return of Double Dragon, which was originally a 1992 Japan-only release. Nice. Getting a special physical cartridge in red. Hmm. But this one's much cheaper, only fifty bucks instead of whatever it was, a hundred or something Ooh. for the Megamans. So are they gonna at least keep it Bimmy and Jimmy? I don't know. <laughs> it, no. it was only Bimmy and Jimmy and Double Dragon Three. Yeah. But it was worth. It was very worth. <laughs> Bimmy and Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so good. But yeah, so we'll see we'll see about that. They said they said something about a first batch, so that means to me that there's gonna be more than one batch, which if this sells out, which I'm pretty sure it's probably gonna, yeah. people like them some double dragons. I like me some double dragons. They'll probably mm-hmm. run, do multiple runs. Hoping so. Uh, somebody has managed to make SNES games playable on unmodified NES hardware. Yeah, about that. The caveat being that the cartridge is a heavily modified card, NES card <laughs> with the Raspberry Pi 3 built in mm. and buttloads of software manipulation. Yeah. So they're using them good old video and audio pins to put shit on the screen. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They're doing Got some it. real cool stuff about it too, to kind of bypass palette limitations by modifying each one by eight pixel strip individually yeah. mm-hmm. instead of doing the four quadrants of the sprite itself. Sure. Dang. People got a lot of time on their hands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm curious because this sounds like it's actually working with the processor instead of just replacing it all together mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm, i want to mm-hmm. say that that uh gosh it was a while ago but during a uh w- there was a task block where they were running like a game console inside a game console well and, they were also running a skype AV. call inside of like a super nintendo so, yeah yeah and doing it over a game boy camera or something yeah. like something that. silly yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> something very very silly but it was what like five frames a second or something so yeah. whatever is still good usable. enough yeah yeah as usable as skype is <laughs> oh. <clears throat> uh speaking of roms and other classic games about 70 presumed lost games were recovered from a large rom dump from a private forum mm, Ooh, nice. presumed to have been lost forever but now, returned. What, like prototype versions or? I don't know. Let me put up the article. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. Long lost Japanese ROMs. Uh, one of them was Japanese PC game Labyrinth. Oh. Blah, 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 blah. Horror Tour, also known as Zeta's Servant of Sheol. Horror Tour 2. I think these are full games, like wow. not, not prototypes. I'm sure they were bundled in with a bunch of prototypes yeah. as well. They were in a folder called Do Not Upload, so probably some collector's <laughs> thing that they wanted to keep all of themselves nice. or whatever. Keep it in the scene. Yep, 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 yep. But anyways, that's good. More stuff is back in rotation, especially stuff that could have been lost forever if, yeah. say, their machine crashed or a hard drive corrupted or whatever. Yeah. Don't keep that stuff to yourself, guys. Come on. Don't be greedy. Yeah. Valve has apparently given up on curating anything on Steam. Yeah. They will allow Ah. anything except games that are, and I quote, illegal or straight up trolling. 
end quote. Back to the porn games. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have very complicated thoughts about this, but I don't want to take up three hours ranting about it, so we're just going to leave it there. Oh, so I'm not allowed to be all like, well, what the hell determines straight up trolling? Exactly. Yeah, right? Okay. Uh, Isn't it there? So they're taking no stance, but they're taking a stance. Yeah. It's true. But they're not really taking a stance, but they're taking a stance. Oh, by the way, they're also still taking 30% of your money. Yeah, of course. But they're not taking a stance. Work on that Half Life 3. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. This <laughs> seems like a, a real convoluted mess yeah. to me. Quality control? Lol. Nah. <laughs> More like nah. PR? Lol. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Yeah, pretty We much. don't want to hire people to do moderation. <laughs> that yeah. would be silly. Community managers? What the hell are those? <laughs> yeah. Nah. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Anyways. So, remember when we've talked about several times in the past, Sony refusing to uh, support cross-play across mm-hmm. multiple platforms. Something tells me that hasn't changed. No, it hasn't. And it's starting no. to bite them real hard. Yeah. Because now with Fortnite coming out on the Switch... It has been discovered, rediscovered, whatever, brought back to the forefront that if your Epic Games account is linked to your Sony account through Fortnite Play, you cannot link it or use it with Fortnite on any other platform. So any of your progression, any of your items, your cosmetics, whatever you bought through it, can't use it anywhere else but the PS4 version of Fortnite. Hmm. (sighs) Nice. Way to go, Sony. Congrats. Yeah. Not the greatest situation for them yeah, to be in. Yeah, I don't think anybody wants like anybody wants to be in freaking Sony jail. <laughs> that... No. No. Yeah. And we've heard multiple times from, you know, devs and publishers where Sony could probably flip a switch and allow it to like go, they'll just turn it on, but Yeah, I don't think nope. it's a technical thing. I want to say it's more of like a contractual thing. Like they just don't wanna, you know. Yeah. Isolationism. Yeah, it's the greatest. No, yeah. I mean I mean it's the worst. Excuse me. <laughs> I got my words mixed up for a second. Mm. So bravo, Sony. And then my final item, E3, slanty face. Yeah. Mm. We'll get to that. Yep. That's what I got for non E3. <laughs> this year's E three was all like blah, yeah. all the things. Mm. So, other non-E3 things, oh, then. is your entire list E3? No, but I wanted to segue into my stuff without having to break. Oh, fair. So go. <laughs> Professionals, we are. All right. So, um, I guess uh, we can kind of cover Fallout 76 as part of that. Um, Can't believe they skipped Fallout 69. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, That's not, not nice. very nice of them. <laughs> Sorry, please go on. Yeah, so my stuff's going to be, uh, before that, um, I guess non-E3 stuff is all hardware stuff because uh, Computex uh, 2018 also happened um, within the last month, at least since our last show. So, uh, yeah, um, Intel had a, a particularly interesting uh, display, a 28-core uh, a CPU running at 5 gigahertz. Asterisk. Sort yes, of. asterisk. <laughs> That's the important part. They had, like, an obnoxious... A uh, cooling system also attached to it, we and it was. We did it, Reddit. Oh wait, it's not <laughs> <Yeah>. real. <laughs> and it was also like you know, um, Intel's uh, like supreme awesome processor. It's like an eight thousand dollars Xeon or something like that. No, it's not. It's that new eighty eighty eight, isn't it? I thought that's what. No, that was. no, no. It wasn't the special edition. This is like a Xeon whatever. Platinum or something. Oh, I misread that story. Then. Yeah, this okay. is a top line server processor, and it was overclocked. So yeah, yeah, good <laughs> shit. Twenty eight cores, five gigahertz. <laughs> yeah, they also they had to bring in like it's basically like a tiny <laughs> fridge with a hose coming out of it. Yeah, it's just an external LM oh, two that I'm yeah. exposing. Wow, nice. good job. They didn't Fuck use off. LN2, it was something else. Was it? Okay. I don't I don't remember what it was, but the article mentioned it was specifically not that. So. No, there was somebody who made inroads in actually having a sort of semi-closed loop LN2 cooler, though, so... Yeah. 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 I don't know that that was necessarily Computex, it was just something weird. Yeah. Isn't the big problem with that, like, uh, condensation that yeah. builds on everything? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> it, it basically just drenches your whole box in, in computer sweat. Gross. Yeah. You. <laughs> That's nasty. <laughs> that is very nasty. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Had to. Yep. yep. So, uh, in addition, um, Zellman demoed a, uh, a kind of their hologram thing. Um, 
but it still uses a fan, so it's not you can't reach you know you can't reach through the hologram just yet. Yet, but uh, gosh, I I really hope that that becomes a thing because holograms are freaking awesome. I want a holodeck. Yep. But it was like it was like a fan with a particular kind of curvature to it um that still projected like a 3D image um which was which was really cool um but it's pretty much just like yeah you point you know some very well calibrated colored laser lights at a fan and you can project an image like like that so huh. weird yeah you can also yell through a fan too it sounds cool oh yeah it does yeah. <laughs> unrelated <laughs> And then uh, another item of note there uh, was uh, the demonstration by AMD of their uh, second gen Threadrippers uh, <laughs> with 32 mm. cores on the 7 nanometer process. Yeah. So mm. they're like, hey, hey, Intel. <laughs> yeah, that was hey. great. We've got four more cores. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they were originally, at least according to the, to the article that I read, originally going to showcase a 24 core. But then, <laughs> uh, like, they showed up with 32 instead. <laughs> Whoops, we forgot to count. <laughs> we just slapped too many on that die. Yeah. Oh, well. They forgot in the right direction this time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, darn. Yeah. yeah. So, what is it? 64 threads then? Yeah. Jesus mm. Christ. That's a lot of threads. <laughs> mm. Yummy. Yeah. That's reaching, like, fancy pillow count threads. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. Not really. That's yeah, actually fun. really low thread yeah. count. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. That's like burlap. <laughs> it's the burlap of processors. There we Sorry. go. Yeah. So There's your new tagline, Andy. Uh, we we need the silk of processors. We need 400 cores with 800 threads. Oh my goodness! Gosh, I don't eight. know if you want to roll around on that though. I don't know. Mike, you want to yeah. roll with that outdated silicon? How about a burlap wafer? <laughs> it's just gonna be a motherboard that's Boosh. just all cores. That's it. Just put a heat sink on the board. Plap. Oh, there you go. Good Shit. system on board. Yes. Yeah. Uh anyway. <laughs> so yeah, those were uh the really big um news items for Computex. A lot of the rest of it was, you know, hey, we added LED lights to everything. I can't wait for that to be Oh, over. including the fake RAM. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, they add the fake right. RAM. So like Yeah, the, Gigabyte made fake RAM that's LED. Yeah, it's the, they released like a RAM set and they're like, "Well, if you don't have the money to shell out for like a full four sticks of RAM, but you don't want empty RAM slots, you can just basically buy these LED modules that do nothing else. Uh, you know, actually, though, this does remind me of a peripheral that I forgot to write down because I wasn't sure if it was from this month. But maybe it's not, but I'm still going to talk about it anyway. So Asus has their ROG line, the Republic of Gamers thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody's all like, you know, multi-monitor gaming is a thing, except, you know, you've got the borders between all the screens and whatnot. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. It's this thing that sits, like, between the two monitors and intelligently diffuses light so that it looks like it's joining at the side yeah. instead of having the borders. Yeah, that was a few months ago, I think. Was it? Yeah, mm -hmm. I just saw this today and it was just like, that's neat. That is not as crappy as this thing. <laughs> yeah. It's still not, like, super great, but it's something. It is something. Weird stick figure drawing. It's yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> they also debuted uh, an ROG phone. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. They actually have an That's Android right. phone, and it has really decent specs. Not going to yeah. lie. Not that I want one, but yeah. it looks really cool. <laughs> Doesn't it also have Gamer like a, a clip-on heatsink slash fan <laughs> slash thing to the back of it too? I, I think it has some modular stuff. Yeah. Mm. And I read about it like three weeks ago and I was like, that's nice, Pat. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. It's probably <laughs> better than HTC at this point, but you know yeah, what? That's a pretty low bar to clear. Yeah. 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 A, a, a phone that's made for gamers, geez, never never heard of that one before. Right. You know. <laughs> Whatever. If Asus wants to give it a try, good on them. Yeah. See what happens. Is that all so, on your list? Uh, that's all for that I've got for Computex. Um, there's also uh, um, another hardware exploit for Intel processors <laughs> that was discovered called uh, Lazy State. Uh. And uh, essentially, um, because of like how it defers like reading some registers and stuff when it's switching between applications. Sometimes you can abuse that to get the floating point registers from other applications. Great. Yep. 
<laughs> so, but it's it's said that uh, it's kind of hard to exploit and easy to patch. So, like a lot of vendors are already patching it at the OS level, which is kind of nice. Um, so it's not yet another firmware update. Um, I, yeah, I don't think it's going to be a firmware so update. It's pushing just, that slog of shit through the enterprise has been just great. Oh, it sure yeah. sounds like it. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think it's going to be a firmware thing this time around. Good. And love it. You know, <laughs> some icing on that cake. It it does not affect AMD processors. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, gee, <laughs> womp womp. Yeah, gee, how the tides turn. Well, yeah. they're, they're crimson tides now with AMD, but you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. However that goes, I don't care. I I want them to scrap. I want them to scrap, and then they'll make everything cheaper. So keep fighting. Yeah. Well, we'll see how that dedicated Intel graphics goes soon, too, then. Yes, yeah. that's <laughs> a thing. We surprisingly. Yeah. yeah. We have I don't think we've had anything like that since like the 740 from like forever ago. We've never had yeah. a discrete graphics never card. Discrete it's one, always been yeah. part of the chipset. Well, mm-hmm. Intel did Intel made their own uh GPU, uh the 740. It oh, was, that was before all the GMA stuff. Yeah, right. but well, that that uh, eventually went ago. into uh, GMA, though. Right. right. That's that right. that's kind of like where all of it started. So we're talking back like in the Matrox days. Okay. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Okay. Good. Coming soon yeah. to a full card near you. <laughs> Yay! It's yeah. only sixteen oh, inches it was, long. It was on AGP, so it wasn't like full card. Oh well. But Oops. AGP was also pretty new when it did that. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we'll see come 2020, I think, was the yeah. possible slated release date for it or whatever. Sure, just blow everybody out of the water, Intel. Please, just, oh, just tr- something. Just I'd, try it, man. You just know, try I'd, it. I'd, I would be thrilled for that to happen, completely <laughs> honest. Like, ah. <laughs> get a just, third player in the GPU market? Yeah, Why? just Why bump off NVIDIA and just see what happens to the internet. Good. I mean... That won't happen. I'm but... all for making all these companies <laughs> fight. Oh, because yeah, Because that sure. brings about innovation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plus, yeah, I like true. seeing fanboys cry. It's just... Yeah. Like, <laughs> so... It's... Yeah. All right. Yeah. Chef's kiss. <laughs> Indeed. So, th- my non-EA topic, the one... E3. That. This is an Ubisoft thing, I think. <laughs> I could Eat be wrong. EA. I'm not sure. No, actually, it's not. It's by the creator of Resin Luminous. Uh, Tetris Effect has been announced slightly before E3 for the PlayStation 4 and PS4 VR uh, by Tetsuya Mizuguchi. As I mentioned, the creator of Res and Luminous. It's due for release in the fall of 2018. Uh, this game is a major departure from the rest of every other Tetris that's been out there right now or that we've seen so far in that instead of being a here, we're going to keep everything really static so you can focus on mechanics no, mm-hmm. this is all in your face. Like, we want you to trip out and just kind of get lost in the mental game of this. So, as you can tell, the name of the game is Tetris Effect, which is a thing that was studied in the early 2000s, where when people are starting to fall asleep, they were starting to see Tetris blocks, or rather Tetrominoes, falling and sometimes filling in spaces and clearing lines and so on and so forth. And what's curious about that is, um, if the information in the trailer is correct, this also apparently affects those with severe memory loss. Hmm. They don't remember playing the game, but they still actually account for the phenomenon. So that's really curious. Hmm. And the game was designed so that you would lose yourself in the game itself, and it amplifies that titular Tetris effect such that the game field is really translucent. It's kind of hard to follow everything beyond like the, the, the well itself is interesting. It's in sync with what you do. Like you have a music track. There are discrete levels, kind of like the original Mm -hmm. Tetris, where you know, clear a certain amount and then it kind of switches. It does that. So it has a different kind of timbre of music for all of these levels, a different kind of visual effect and colors and whatnot. It has a scheme that goes with it. But when you clear lines or when you rotate or when you do certain things, it'll be in sync such that additional instruments would play. The visuals would change. 
the blocks would start kind of freaking out on the screen a little bit, but I mean, like, they would stay where they are. It's just they look right. different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also another mechanic in this where you can stop time in a way, and you can either get yourself out of a game over by clearing some lines, or you can just get more points and whatnot just by, you know, getting more and clearing more Tetrises and whatnot. I'm not quite sure how that works yet. Um, it's interesting because the trailer for this game largely revolved around that study and giving the exposition for the game as to why it's designed the way it is. And I thought that was really neat. Um, they did have an interview where they had some actual gameplay. There's a YouTube video out there of, I want to say, about four minutes of 4K 60 gameplay. It looks really cool. They didn't really go into that stop time thing in much detail. I'm sure they had in some interviews, but not the ones that I saw. But it looks really interesting. It's it's definitely a departure. Um, I'm curious to see what it looks like in PSVR. I've never actually used PSVR. I don't think I would buy one specifically for this. However, it being a PlayStation 4 game, I would like to try it. It looks really interesting. Now... What happens at the end of TGM 1 when you get the credits screen, maybe it's not in TGM 1, it's in one of the TGMs, but everything kind of goes invisible. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, this would actually be a really interesting way to train for that because it kind of blends itself in so you don't always see what's going on, but it comes back. Unlike, you know, Secret Grade or whatever the hell it is, it's not Secret Grade, but um, Invisible Mode, the staff roll, whatever. Mm -hmm. So... I think it'd be interesting to train in in a way to do it that way. But the game looks cool. Um, the music is a complete departure from every other Tetris game. You don't have whatever songs were always in the originals, be it Tetris or be it Nintendo or Sega or whatever. Um, so it's really curious, but these songs are really catchy. So we'll see if they catch on, too. Dang, I was hoping for some really psychedelic remix of Type B or something. Yeah, yeah. well, you know, that's a thing. But that's a cool game. It's going to come out at the end of the year. Fall, actually, not even winter time. So we'll see how that goes. But without further ado, E3. Uh, E3. Oh, I, I had one more item. You lied. <laughs> I didn't say I was done. You You're... did say you were done, but no. go on. <laughs> You're like, and in other news, not it's not E3. <laughs> like you just sort of jumped in. Um, the, I just have one more. I promise. Uh, Planet X three. And you're done. Uh, okay. <laughs> Go. Okay. Planet X three. <laughs> yes. Um. So Planet X two, and I guess X one. Um. Where, um, it's kind of like top down strategic. You move these tanks around, and you attempt to essentially conquer a, a map and stuff like that. Uh -huh. And the first one was designed uh, for the VIC-20, and X2 was designed for the Commodore 64. And the author of these games um, is uh, the 8-bit guy on YouTube, um, but uh, on, the, on the Kickstarter it says uh, David Murray, Murray, something like that. Um, and there's a, uh, a Kickstarter for X3, and this one is going to be an MS-DOS release. And um, it was a. They originally set the bar at uh, you know thirty thousand. Um, it's over three times that now, um, and so it's you know kind of been an incredible success for them. There's still like eighteen days left or something obnoxious, hmm. um, and um, yeah, I think it's pretty awesome when you can have uh, like kind of progress through, um, with kind of keeping the same core gameplay, but like adding new features and and kind of upgrading the system at each step. Um, really, you know, between those three systems, um, you have kind of like a natural progression of, um, like just increased fidelity, um, but it's all kind of the same game idea. So unless you want to stick with your four color CGA. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Magenta. Oh yeah. They, <laughs> so X3 is going to support pretty much every kind of video mode, uh, all the way up through VGA. So you can do CGA and composite, uh, <laughs> CGA. Which exposes uh, some additional colors that that so it's not four color anymore. Neat. So kind of combinations okay. of those four. Um, it's kind of weird. Um, so you know that like in a composite signal because of uh, you know, kind of like how it works, you can get color banding and stuff. Yeah. Well, they also figured out that you could abuse this to generate colors that normally you couldn't get out of 
a uh, a CGA graphics card. Hmm. Um, they abused this on the Apple II, and also like you saw it in some of the uh, Sierra releases, like King's Quest and whatnot. Hmm. Okay. Um, so they you basically um take advantage of the video signal by setting uh, pixels like very thin pixels. Um, in very specific places and how they line up with how the colors are generated. Um, you know, you can get like another full gamut of 16 colors um, that you don't really get with, uh, you know, with any of the other video modes, which is kind of neat. Nice. So it's still 16 colors. You just get a different 16, essentially. All right. Um, hmm. But uh, yeah, this game's going to support that EGA, VGA. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited for it. Um, so. Uh, if you want to check it out, uh, definitely uh, you know look it up. Planet X Three Kickstarter, and uh, you'll definitely find it. Is it time? It is time. Microsoft. Thirty seconds on the clock. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Halo Infinite. <laughs> Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Fallout seventy six. Battlefield Five. Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition comes out in winter, which I'm looking forward to because I no longer need to own an Xbox three sixty. Uh, you don't, you make... don't own one. Well. It's in the bin. We still technically own it. We're gonna, uh, we're Devil May Cry it. 5 in spring of 2019. That's a big one. Cuphead in the delicious last course in 2019. Tunic, which is basically Microsoft Legend of Zelda, but you're a fox. Battletoads 2019. Just Cause 4 coming out on the 4th of December. Bethesda announced a couple big things. The Elder Scrolls Legends. The Elder Scrolls 6 does not have a name yet. Doom Eternal and Skyrim 2. Yeah, right? <laughs> Skyrim year. Yes. <laughs> now with more Skyrim. <laughs> Wolfenstein Youngblood coming out in 2019. Square Enix disappointed a lot of people because there was no news on the 7 remake. However, womp, yeah. womp. Shadow of the Tomb Raider releases on the 14th of September. Stormblood Final Fantasy 14 Online was announced. Final Fantasy 14 Online X Monster Hunter World. <laughs> Apparently, that's a crossover coming in summer of 2018. Dragon Quest. 11 echoes of an elusive age announced 4th of september this year octopath traveler a huge one 13th mm -hmm. of july a note on that one it is switch exclusive you download the demo that's coming out soon you get three hours of gameplay as part of that demo that save data that you get from that transfers into the full game and uh -huh. you can get some exclusive things by getting the demo and just playing some of it just so you can get a feel for it you get special stuff nice mm. Kingdom Hearts 3, finally. The 29th of January in 2019. The, the joke with, Wait, with Square Enix is oh like... Oh my god, 2019. Uh, Nintendo had more, more to out. show about Final Fantasy 7 than Square Enix did. Well, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> Ubisoft. Blech. Beyond Good and Evil 2, Rainbow Six Siege, another Rainbow Six game. Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle Donkey Kong Adventure. That's a name. 26th of June. <laughs> That's almost as bad as a Kingdom Hearts name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Skull and Bones 2019. Yet another pirate game. Starlink Battle for Atlas uh, 16th of October. And apparently it has Star Fox DLC. Shrug. <sighs> the Crew 2 21st of June. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Not a Mario crossover. 5th of October. Sony. <laughs> the Last of Us Part 2. People were tearing up at that one, apparently. God of War, a new game plus was announced. Destiny 2, Forsaken. Ghost of Tsushima. Shu... Oh, <laughs> I tried to pronounce this one earlier. Tsushima, there we go. Is there really a first H in there? Yes. Okay. Chu. 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 Yeah. Chu. Tsushima. There we go. Tsushima. There you go. I'm so terrible at this. It's... It's... Yeah, it's a weird diphthong of things there. Anyway, uh, Resident Evil 2 remake 25th or 25th of january in 2019 death stranding got another trailer mm -hmm. this time with actual gameplay nio 2 when's the last time i heard nio that's been a long many, time many many years ago yeah. yeah nintendo demon x machina 2019 fire emblem three houses mm. yeah 2019 an actual fire emblem game it's interesting it combines the standard top down do your tactician thing with you have an army now it's not just you against the rest of the army and somehow winning mm. you, you actually have people with you that kind of happen in the cutscenes. so it's a little bit like radiant dawn kind of yeah. where it had the cutscenes and the battles and if you didn't turn them off you get that kind of stuff anyway fortnite available now 
for the Switch. Hollow Knight, available now for the Switch. Killer Queen Black, no longer just an arcade machine. Killer Queen is coming to the Switch. Overcooked 2, coming on 7th of August. SNK Heroines, Tag Team Frenzy. Super Mario Party, <laughs> 5th of October, which will apparently have an online gameplay mode, yeah. but only the mini games, not the full game. We should huh. really get that. Oh, good. I want to play Mario Party with people. I haven't played Mario Party in like 10 years. No, it's not. You've played it at Mike and Jenny's. <laughs> I su- yeah, I suppose. That was that brief moment. Yeah. I, I guess only having the mini games is only half of the friendship ruiner. I really, really <laughs> like the board game part yeah. much more than the mini games, but that's me. Whatever. Um, and then, of course, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has DLC called The Golden Country coming out in September. That one also is supposedly super huge. Um, but going back on the Nintendo had more about FF7 than Sony did, or rather than Square did. So, obviously, Smash Brothers was a huge thing. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And now Cloud's Limit Gauge is on screen at all times. Mm. And that was something that Nintendo called out in the Nintendo Direct. And that was more screen time than Cloud had anywhere else. (laughs) (laughs) So did you happen to see any of the trailer for Smash yet? Uh, Very small Smash and trailer. Did you get to see the new characters? Yes, that I did. Did did you get to see that trailer? Where Ridley broke Mario's neck and stabbed. Whoa. Yes, like yeah. I remember seeing the silhouette of Mario getting stabbed. No, that was Mega Man getting stabbed. Oh, Me- the excuse heart. me, Mega Man. Yeah, you're Mario right. Mario right. was ground down to the ground and twisted the neck. Whoa. Yeah. Dang, Nintendo. Brutal. That was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> so like, oh, oh dang. Yeah. <laughs> It was that kind of brutal. I yeah. didn't realize that people were clamoring for Ridley and Smash Brothers for so Neither long. Neither did yeah. I, but apparently Ridley's too big as a meme. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> now it it's to me. Waluigi's too big. Uh, ah, yeah. uh, suck it, Waluigi. <laughs> and apparently Bomberman, because Bomberman's just an assist, like Lin Lindis from Fire Emblem, also right. an assist. Right, right. Snake comes back. They've toned down his butt. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. I was like, oh. <laughs> It's no longer bootylicious wow. as much. Toned down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love Lol. it. Bayonetta, though. <laughs> they also kind of on that same, <laughs> on that same note, they uh, they toned down Zero Suit Samus's boobies too. So I mean, you you give a little, you get a little. Wait. <laughs> no, you. We lost a lot. <laughs> I was <laughs> yeah. gonna say. Like I mean, we, like we lost we a lot. I think both we both runs. lost. Yeah, yeah we here. did. What the hell, <laughs> Nintendo? Yeah. <laughs> there are lots of new costumes. Um, Bayonetta has one from Bayonetta 1 and 2. Um, there are... What the hell are those called? Echo characters? Mm, yep. That sounds right? Yep. Yeah. So now Daisy is Peach's Echo character. Right. There are a couple other ones that I'm forgetting. Um, I don't know if it's a costume change or an Echo character, but the Leaf Green trainer is in there for Pokemon Trainer as well. Yeah, I want to say that's just a costume change. Could be, okay. Um, gosh. Ice Climbers are back. That was pretty neat. Yay! They're quirky. Um, and apparently they have a mechanic where if the girl Ice Climber get, ends up getting knocked off or is somewhere else, then you're pretty much boned. So Yeah, I mean, you need really both of them. <laughs> Otherwise, you're, uh, you're not going to be doing a good time there. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember everything else from that trailer because it was so long. Holy shit. I mean, TLDR, all of the previous characters from the game series are back, plus a couple extra. Ridley being the big one, I guess. Uh, Samus didn't die at the end, even though it looked like she did. Mm. <laughs> so instead, she just kind of like jumped away from the blast and had an action shot of her, f- like her foot going right toward the camera to try to you know revenge back in zero suit mode because she no longer had whatever the suit is and apparently mario didn't die from getting his neck snapped and Mega Man didn't die from getting stabbed to the chest yeah like how much of well, this those... is canon <laughs> <laughs> well who knows because those other two stayed down oh, samus did not so but because that was that that was at the very end of the trailer like samus just like came up from the blast and jump kicked at ridley and that was the cut so Aww. but yeah ridley when um Samus turned around, was just kind of like twirling Mario's hat around. Oof. Yeah, it was just kind of like... That's rough. Fuck. (laughs) 
Good <laughs> shit, though. Um, the Zelda stuff. A lot of them are Batwa costumes now. I'm trying to remember now. Mm-hmm. Um, Got the squid kids in there. That's true. Yeah. And they have some cool mechanics, too. Gosh, there's eight different ones you can go for. Yeah, there's eight Squid Kids with all of their own unique costumes and all sorts of stuff. That's kind of neat. But they're all costumes of the same character. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, um, it sure sounded like there was going to be a story mode. I it sure so. sounded like that. And it sounds like you're going to start with the original eight characters and just have to keep getting them. And apparently, how you get them is going to be a little more varied this time. So that'll be neat. But yeah, I mean, it's a game I'm probably going to get and suck at, but I'll probably get it anyway. It yeah. sounds fun. December. Yeah. December, December. Holiday season, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. Keep okay. your eye out for that Switch Get bundle. everyone hyped yep. up in the summer and uh, release it just in time for the holiday season. I was really hoping that they would start um, hinting at another Mario Kart coming out soon. Because this one's really just a rehash of Wii U version. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like, what would they even do with it? What mm. would make it fresh for the Switch? Who knows? I mean, they'd probably have to start bringing in other <laughs> series like they did for Animal Crossing and uh, Zelda. Yeah. That's true. And I guess um, F-Zero, because they have those two tracks. But it wasn't like they had a full four-track DLC. They, they, they really should just stop teasing thing. us and release another freaking F-Zero. Yes, please. Yeah, that's something that I really wanted. And another actual Star Fox, not just a DLC for some other unrelated game. Yeah. Please? Yeah, that was kind of hinted at, too. Like, I heard murmurings of some sort of Star Fox thing happening, but I never saw it in the list of games. So, that could still be a thing more star fox assault less star fox adventure please yeah (laughs) yeah yeah anyway uh yeah i'm pretty sure that was most of e3 Mm -hmm. outside of the pc stuff but a lot of that was just you know hey these console games are also on pc i'm sure i'm wrong but a lot of that list was so feel free to educate me some other time <laughs> because it is time for Toonski's part yeah, one here indeed let's see here Toonski's. dark side of the moon by rotten eggplant from ducktales a remix of donkey kong country entitled interruptible power by 744 and i've got a remix from chrono trigger by andrew thompson fernando valencia and christy Med- mezinez uh called elements of time
Well, despite hearing about all the games at E3, I sure hope we've at least been playing a couple. Yeah, mostly the same series. Guess which one? <laughs> uh, Final Fantasy. Nope. Oh. Yeah, sorry. No, back on the Tetris bandwagon chain. <laughs> chain, uh, chain. again. Well, chain train. wagon. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Gonna paint this wagon. Oh, sorry. What? Tetris, the Grandmaster. <laughs> Still haven't quite hit it. Did I? No, I didn't quite hit S4 yet. Very close, though. Uh, BPS Tetris for the Famicom. That's a game. Um, how do I best describe this game? You rotate with the down button. Bad. And you yeah. hard drop with A. Bad. Yes, agreed. Tengen Tetris, or Tengen, depending, um, was a bootleg and infinitely better. Released in 1989 for the NES. Infinitely better than BPS Tetris or infinitely better than normal ass NES Tetris? Honestly, it's, in my opinion, better than both. What? Yeah, it's it's really awesome. <laughs> I, I, I just, I really like it. But, but NES Tetris is cool. And yeah, and then you play good. later Tetris games and you're like, oh god, it takes so long to move blocks uh, laterally. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have, like das or anything else it sucks it's so bad but they only, they only had eight bits to work with back then so yeah you know. ignore those other games <laughs> it's fine <laughs> but i i did play nintendo's tetris which was released in the americas nintetris yes because it was bps tetris apparently for japan that's what they got um, yeah i'm so oh. sorry oops but a, a little curious uh information for you a tidbit is that uh bulletproof software made a lot of the later tetris games including yeah. tetris 2 plus bombless and the dr mario stuff and that da, 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 and, and game boy tetris and and somehow those didn't suck complete ass yeah that's true somehow <laughs> jeez it's like people didn't play test it perhaps don't know whatever and of course beyond tetris uh when we were hanging out here, we did play a little bit of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Mm -hmm. Went through 48 races. Somehow we actually got through them all. Yeah, yeah, we did. We managed to do that. And then I think a couple times over the last month, we ended up stopping over at uh, Geeks Mania. And we did. Playing yeah. some arcade stuff. Unfortunately, um, they have a cocktail arcade machine, I guess is what they're called. Uh, where you sit down, and that one's been out of order the last few times. But that one, I managed to get like the top five scores one day, and I was just like, I don't know why I'm good at this, but I guess it's cool. Who ass? Who ass? <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just got to get all of the three letter curses in there. there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it w it was a good time. It's always worth going there. Um, that may need to be a thing this weekend, perhaps. Just be like, and we're done packing for a little bit. I don't know. We'll figure something mm -hmm. out, but. It's worth going there. Uh, it may end up being one of the places, one of the venues for the post luncheon going into Madison and playing games thing for October 5th. So we'll see. Depends if that other place downtown, the barcade, gets its doors open and it's, you know, worth the cost of admission and all that. Yeah, I want to go when they open up. Yeah, we'll see. Supposedly it's going to happen at the later part of the year. But. That's pretty much all I've played this month. I haven't had a whole lot of time for much more. I already have it up for you. Oh, okay, uh, fine. Me. I'll read my list then. <laughs> um, so I did a bit of practice on Jill of the Jungle. Still, uh, kind of on the fence if I want to, you know, do any sort of um, like actual speed running. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that whole freaking game is silly sound effects <laughs> wasn't there some like biblical christian variants oh yeah based on that same engine too what was that one called uh onesimus something like that that sounds about right yeah yeah uh, okay i yeah. remember that one too that was on some shareware cds way back mm -hmm. in the day and like well bible no adventures jungle. yeah <laughs> yeah pretty much so, but yeah, I've, I've uh, been putting in some practice on that. Um, there's, uh, I found out that um, not only are there like multiple variants of that game, but some of them are balanced very differently. Yep. Uh, mm. So there's a there's a particular enemy. Um, it's just called Demon, like in the game files. It's just a flying red red demon thing, and uh, they shoot like these fireballs, 
and there's no cooldown on them, so they can just shoot, like, every frame a fireball at you, and you just get this chain of fireballs <laughs> that can instantly kill you if you bump, hit it. Um, to make matters worse, like, in the very first version of the game, they were one-hit kills. Later on, they take, like, ten. Whoa. Um, and they are difficult to hit because they fly all over, and typically levels where you find them, you have the bladed weapon, which is affected by gravity, which you know, makes them fall down. So the blades end up missing them all the time anyway. Um, so yeah, there's one particular level that's chock full of them that is, that could very easily be a run killer for anybody. Yeah. So you're going to have to work on some strats for that. Um, but aside from that, I've actually had a lot of fun. Um, I picked up a new uh, data path card, the, uh, the Vision AVHD, um, and had a chance to play around with the capture on that. Looks excellent. It has two DVI and one composite. Yep. What the hell? And you can't <laughs> access the composite input inside of OBS. That's maybe weird. that maybe that well, needs to be plugged in first. The, or I don't know, I mean, yeah, I'm not sure. Like I you can know. view all three of them with their Windows software, but for whatever reason, only the DVI input show up in OBS. So we'll have to we'll have to work something out. Not that we're ever going to capture composite. Yeah, you're probably but right. Just in case. You I mean, never I, know. well, I might yeah. attach my uh, Commodore up to it because S video is the best you can really get out of that. So, but it's composite. Yeah, so I'd have to step it down to composite. Ew. <laughs> it's the best I can do. So. Eh, no. <laughs> we can. Yes, it we is. Can do better can do better i we don't can't. care <laughs> I, you would have to create a replacement Why? video chip in order to be able to output anything oh, better no, than s video we would just uh get you a different capture device that does s video that's yeah because those are stupid cheap those are pretty cheap yeah 10 bucks all right yep Woo. yep so yeah there's that um oh you moved the games list away from me <sighs> what Really, just mount a monitor under this thing. Yeah, like, right. Hey, there it is. I'll just load it up on my phone so I can make sure that it's not going to go away. Um, I've also played a bunch of Master of Magic. Um, so another. I I really don't like 4x games. Um, but that one in particular, I'm really into. Um, Pathfinder Tabletop, still doing our weekly game. Um, I did some Sonic Mania. Uh, the last time that uh, That's true. that we all hung out here, yep. I played. Sure did. <laughs> I'm not really sure how far into it I got, um, because I don't know how long the game is. I don't but remember what zone we stopped at. We went to. Did we do like flying battery? Oh, you yeah. went well past yeah, that. Yeah. No, there was okay. There was more. You but, went at least two worlds beyond that. Yeah, there's a whole lot of game there, though. Sure is. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it definitely feels like a classic Sonic game. So, uh, yeah, a lot of fun. Um, I uh had finished setting up uh, open ITG on my cabinet, so I'm not running Dance Dance Revolution anymore. I'm running um, essentially a PC in there that has a very special build of uh, Stepmania. So. And Windows XP. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, boy. Keep it off the internet forever. <laughs> oh, wait, you can't run Steam on that. Well, you won't be able to run Steam on it yeah. soon. Yeah, you're not wrong. Something we missed, I guess, in the news segment. Yep, and also Blake Stone Planet Strike, uh, which is probably another game if I ever get into speedrunning uh, a game that I will actually do. Um, there's a huge, huge difference um, between uh, the standard run and 100% runs, and that's because, you know, when Apogee puts out a game that's on the Wolfenstein engine, there's a bazillion secrets in every single level, so... There is. Is that different than... Because Aliens of Gold was what the first chapter or first yeah, that sequence one, of levels and Aliens of Gold was a six episode six release episodes. and okay, then Planet so... Strike came out the next year. Oh, that was another like separate release. It wasn't yeah. part of that. And oh, that one is like another twenty or thirty levels. Jeez. So yeah, those games like the later levels <sighs> in both of these are actually really difficult. Um, even on the easiest skill level. So, um. But it's it's definitely something worth practicing, and I think it's a lot of fun. So apparently, yeah. Ian's been designing Doom levels lately. Like, yeah, not he, being lazy for once and designing oh, Doom levels. Oh, okay, so he's actually doing it because I know he's talked about it a lot. Last oh time. no, he has things that have been already <laughs> play tested, and he wants me, oh, right a on. person who has played Doom for literally two minutes of my life, nice. to play it and just give critiques. Yeah, I mean, I'll do I it. played I'll play Wheels. It too. 
I used to do uh like Doom maps way back in the day. It, it's a long time ago. Yeah. No. My 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 big experience was I used the marathon <laughs> engine to play wheels. That was the most yeah. I've played a game like that. <laughs> Shooting pies. Yeah. Good times. Not good times. It was a terrible time. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> So how that's, about you, that's hilarious. Mr. Bond slash Quest for <laughs> Semi-Glory? <laughs> so last time I was on the very cusp of the end of Everspace. And it was a little actually disappointing in the end. Because I had gotten to the boss, and I would gotten down to one little peg of life left on the boss, and then I died. Oh, no. no. So my expectation was that I needed to go back and refight the entire fight. But no, when I got back there, it still had just the one peg of life left. So I'm like, oh. oh. And it's dead. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit disappointing. Because, huh. like, I really didn't want to fight the entire thing over again, but I kind of did want to fight yeah. the entire thing over <laughs> yeah. again. So I was just like, oh. You didn't want him to just give it to you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I expected, like, you know, half health regen or something. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. It still some time, but then it's just like, oh, all right, whatever. <laughs> the end, you win. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all done. That was a good game, though. That was a nice uh, six degrees of freedom open space shooter. I do like me some six degrees of freedom. That's a lot of degrees of freedom Yeah. in, in, in the scheme of things here. So after that, I started up Cave Blazers, which is kind of a, it's very Spelunky-esque. Yeah. With a lot more RPG elements, so a lot more character progression elements. As yeah, far as, I know, think I was doing one of those streams. Whatever. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. I was not great at it, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. And I probably will play it a little bit more casually off stream just because it was a, a pretty fun game, although it's something that, yeah, it's some roguelikes. So you start over at the very beginning and all your stats are reset. So it's just like, <sighs> Okay, another 10 minutes until I actually get to something interesting now. So it's probably not good for a super extendo stream session anymore, but it's still pretty good. After that now, I started up on Overload. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> Overload that is, is a... Ooh, that's a good game. Uh, I got to start it so... Like, like mm. I was really excited to see it when we went to PAX that one year. Mm. And uh, Oh, I, that yeah. game. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The sixth off. Yeah. yeah. That's really good. So that's the alumnus the alumni of uh, parallax software the original creators of descent started up revival productions and made overload so it is definitely decent <laughs> <laughs> right it's on very decent decent ha 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 no uh, it's more than decent. It's, it's it's a fucking fantastic game i love it i think i'm about maybe about two-thirds of the way through the campaign by now which i'll be disappointed when it ends because it is a very yeah. fun game but then i'll probably go back through and try to 100 percent or do something else with it because it is really fun and fluid and, and hectic and gives me lots of heart attacks in a good way. And just that, so that's really a lot of fun. Plus then there's challenge modes after that. Mm -hmm. So for score runs or time runs or whatever. So we got lots of content to do yet. Yep. Uh, besides that shmup book club uh, wrapped up on Axelay last month. I think I ended around number three. I want to say 1.07 million, uh, almost all the way through the second loop. So not nice. bad. Not bad. Not great, but not yeah. bad. Um, now, this month, for the month of June, we start up another game, Thunder Force 4. Mm. Uh, the Japanese release of Lightning the Dark Star Quest or something. I <laughs> never heard <laughs> of it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's some, you know, whatever. It's uh, the fourth in the series, and it's kind of visually offensive. Oh. It's, it's, a, it's a Sega Genesis game. And, you know, Genesis was known for, you know, Sonic or whatever. And it's okay, but then there are just some areas that are very visually <laughs> oh. <laughs> like very hard to follow. There's a lot of stuff going on. Doesn't deal with lag well. There's a lot of sprite flickering. Plus, oh, they've got no. some really bad parallax issues on some levels. Nice. So it's just like, ooh, my eyes are barfing <laughs> right now. Please get me away from this, but that's all right. So I'm currently sitting at number one on that with a 1.2 some million. You can deal with the flickering. Apparently yeah. I can. I can do it very well, but nobody... Just pretend it's interlacing. Yeah. It's fine. Oh, well. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, I'm the first one to crack a million so far. Nobody's made it clear of it yet. Maybe next week I'll be able to do it. I don't know. It really depends. Then, right of course, uh, Ketsui goes through the end of June. I'm not any better at that. I yeah, that's like, fair. I still get smacked down pretty dang quickly. <laughs> so you're about garbage. as good as you were back in, what, February, April, rather? Yeah, yeah. roughly there, Boots. Nice. And I, I know I can be better if I put some time into it, but <laughs> it's just like, eh, whatever, once a week, we'll, yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll give it a go and see if I get better. I have not gotten better. <laughs> fair. That's all right. And on top of that, the standard, well, standard, haha, uh, LTTP randos 
on Saturday nights and Assault on Andrew Cactus speedruns on Sunday nights, which, now that the new PC patch has dropped, has become a lot faster. I can so, imagine. Yeah, tell us more about that. Dropping PBs left and right here, which is fantastic. So pretty have you much lost any records yet? Have you mean have I lost my number one spots on yeah. any of them? Not no, not the ones that I currently possess. I no. see. Okay. I've certainly strengthened a couple, which is great. Good. Um so the patch essentially has buffed every character except Shiitake, the one with the rail gun in the mines. Okay. Because she was already had infinite damage as long as they lined it up, pretty much. Uh, higher DPS for everything. There's uh, a few visual te- tweaks to bring it in line with the Xbox version. Mm-hmm. I got some new graphics surrounding battery pickups. Uh, I want to say there are some tweaks to the spawns, but I don't think there's many, at least none to really throw me off, so I don't care too much. Yeah. So how did Aubergine change? Oh, oh, she's very powerful now. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me very happy that she finally has decent DPS. Yeah. Her single target damage isn't great still. But the Singularity has a much higher duration. Nice. Uh, DPS on Hilo is, is bumped up a little bit. So it is proper slice and dice salad shooter action up in there. <laughs> All right. So it. you've definitely improved your time with her. I have by over a minute and a half. Nice. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a pretty yeah. significant yeah, difference. It is quite significant. I was happy just to get sub 50, and now we're sitting at almost a sub 47. Ooh, so okay. I'm like, mm, yeah. Okay, Aubergine. Yeah. <laughs> that's my girl. Yep. And that's it. That's it for now. Fair enough. Some game designs. Some game designs after some Toonskis. That's oh, true. Oh, yes. All right, back into that. Gallif's World. And I'm going to continue <laughs> featuring Rebecca E. Trip every week that there is a new Rebecca E. Trip remix because mm-hmm. I like her music. Yeah. So. Gallus World by Rebecca E. Tripp from Final Fantasy V. A remix from a Street Fighter II entitled Burning Vigor by that headband guy. And I've got a remix from The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess by D-dubs called Echoes of Dusk. Thank you. 
Oh, yeah, the 80s fade. <laughs> it did sweet. sound very 80s. Yeah, I was pretty okay with that. Yeah. So, oh, game ideas. Oh, we got some designs tonight, don't we? Yeah, nope. I'm going to go ahead and talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever, you told me you did. <laughs> um, seeing as I was talking about Tetris Effect before, I kind of wanted to dabble with the whole it's not super clear what you're supposed to do thing. I'm like, it's always effusive. So okay. the title here is called Found. That's it. Okay. Not lost, but found. The genre is action puzzle. So players is one, because I really want this to be a thing that you just kind of tunnel vision your way into. And the graphic style is abstract, fractal, minimal, whatever you want to call it. It just kind of evolves around as the game goes on. But it's a lot of that kind of stuff. There's not any like discrete, like, okay, we definitely know these are walls, et cetera. It doesn't really have iconography that would suggest that it's relatable to real life things. So mm -hmm. audio style, discordant, sometimes congruous, uh, evolves with the gameplay along with those visuals kind of the same way. So 
I'll try to make it make sense. <laughs> Go on. The point of view is thinking face emoji. You don't really know. Like, sometimes it really feels like it could totally be top down. Others, it feels like you could be coming in at an angle. And it really depends on where you are and what you're doing. It kind of just morphs around you. So it plays with your sense of depth. Because it could seem like it's really flat on paper and everything's really moving around like this. Otherwise, it really feels like, oh, wait, I'm turning a wall here. What the hell's going on? How did that just suddenly start happening? Okay. So, so it plays with your, your expectation for the reality around you. Um, the hook is, what is the state of being lost? Are you lost? It's really trying to make you wonder, okay, so what's going on? Really? There's no story. Other than just like, there's this pervasive feeling of like, am I doing this right? What am I supposed to be doing? That kind of thing. That also kind of came in as a an inspiration from fucking Death Stranding. Because it's like, what is <laughs> well, this yeah, shit? Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> but yeah. this is less gore and more exploration as a genre. Less gore, more explore. Or philosophical, <laughs> sort of? Philosorambling. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and, Your inventory know. is nothing, question mark? You might find stuff. It might have the, literally nothing to do with the game. Inven- you might stuff. <laughs> found items. Like, you, you found a blinking dot and you stepped on it. And it didn't blink after you got off of it. So who knows if you picked something up? You Maybe it. it's a switch. Maybe huh. it's just nothing. Who okay. knows? That's a thing. I so can, I can see that either being incredibly frustrating or thinking face emoji worthy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mechanics move. That's what you get. Your objective is to accomplish what you think the objective is. It changes every time as the game is played. It could avoiding being touched by moving objects, simply navigating a labyrinth, collecting things or concepts, whatever. It just kind of morphs around whatever you end up doing, but you huh. have to figure out how to go. This has kind of like a uh, like a really trippy uh, mist kind of... Um sound to it yeah so definitely but without tangible things to look at and things to write down and be like okay so this statue is holding up an apple yeah clearly i need to counterbalance no it's not going to be anything quite like that it's going to be a i've noticed these really abstract trends and i think this is what the game is trying to have me do and then you just like provide input so it doesn't really prompt you in any way. There's no text. It's just barriers that you navigate through. There could be things that look like they're other objects, but you don't know if they are. And you just kind of have to exist around them and see what the hell's going on. It's the most abstract puzzle game I can imagine. <laughs> That exists right now. That sounds sort of close to that. Have you played The Witness? I have heard of it. Okay. I have not heard much about it. I just heard it. It's a, it's a game. All right. It's uh, Jonathan's blow. It's Jonathan Blow's second game. Okay. You know, the dude who made Braid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um. Is there some like deep philosophical meaning behind this one too? I don't know. Because like there's definitely, like, a lot of him in Braid. I, I played through it, and the puzzles were neat and, you know, made you think, and some of them were really obtuse and kind of like, okay, sure, why did that work, but all right. Yeah, yeah. And the ending was... You don't know what I, it was. I don't know what it yeah, was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Like, not even, like, the interesting, oh, well, I don't know what that was. It was more like... Eh? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> It didn't feel like an ending. It did wow. not. No. There we go. It, it okay. felt it felt very different and it felt uh it felt something that I probably shouldn't say on the air, so we'll just leave it at that. Mm. Fair. 
discordant. Yeah, well, more than that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair. More than that. Incomplete. In incomplete and. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Good old Bemos. Yeah. Stupid. Bemos. Yes. <laughs> You gotta know there's gonna be something Bemos like because in every puzzle game you need to have something like that. Of course. You can't just stand there, you gotta move. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, it's gonna be super difficult to figure out what the hell we could do with this. But I really wanted to play with the idea of messing with expectations. And this is perhaps the best way I could actually give some sort of dichotomy to it. Like, you're comparing this against what you expect. What do you see? What are you doing? Like, how are we going to make these things mesh? So, I don't know. It obviously would take a lot of roughing out in order to even get something going with this. Mm, yeah, make something playable yeah. out of it. Or even concepts. Unless you're going with straight up walking sim like some other games. I don't know. Yeah, really depends. I, I really think it's going to be, there are some lines, there is something that could represent you, and everything else beyond that is just kind of a trip. <laughs> hmm. Doesn't necessarily have to be like hypno-toad kind of things, but like... <laughs> 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 but it's interesting, like... How do I describe? Almost a bit like Field of View, where everything is just kind of like, you're hyper right there... And then sometimes you're able to take a step back conceptually and be like, okay, there's a bit more here that I can interact with and see at once. But sometimes it's really tunnel vision, depending on like how quickly you're going. Maybe you're, maybe you're moving so fast that the game's like, okay, well, that's all we're going to be able to let you focus on. And that forces you to slow down a little bit to see what the hell else is around you. That kind of thing. A very experiential yeah, sort of. It's really meant to mess with perception. I think that's the biggest thing. Like, I, I want to create a constant sense of unease while also providing some sort of input that lets people know that there's forward progress. So at the very least, you have that. Hopeful but anxiety. You well, that could be. <laughs> but I mean, like, you don't really know what the objective is, but you're doing something. All right. So it's forward progress, be it good or not. Mm. So there was uh, something like that um, in a uh, a Megazooks game of all things. Interesting. Um, there's uh, and I don't remember the name of it. Um, but it was um, so they had kind of a Groundhog Day mechanic going on where there's five different uh, stages, you know, like in, in the, the, the loop that you start in. And the things that you, um, you know, the things that you do back when the loop goes all the way around kind of carry over. Um, so, like, if you were to unlock a door, you know, in this other place, the next time you come back to it, you can go through that door, that sort of thing. Yeah, I like that. And so what they... The, but they didn't tell you anything about the game. They basically just kind of dropped you in there with like a uh, a story, and um, they revealed it to you bit by bit as the loops continued. So mm. like every time you do another loop, you get another bit of the story. And oh, it's like you're recalling something. Yeah. Okay. And uh, but if you do a certain sequence of things within this loop, you could break out of that loop and start to explore other areas. And so once you unlocked them, you could go to those other areas. Hmm. This sounds uh, a lot like Bravely Default, and I don't want to ruin that game for myself yeah. yet. <laughs> but once the loop ends, you go all the way back to the beginning and stuff like that. So you're kind of gradually unlocking things, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. always the same so starting point. you have point. to repeat the breakout and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and you don't, like, you kind of <laughs> have... A sense of progress in that if you go to an area that you haven't been to before or appears to be unlocked now that was locked before, um, like they don't explicitly tell you, hey, go here. You just sort of happen upon it as you're going through these loops and exploring new corners, uh, you know, of the way that um, you're kind of finding things out. Because the thing is, like, it's divided in five stages, but they're not the same five. Like, where 
which side of the screen you leave on in the first stage determines where you end up on the second stage and so on. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So it's uh, it, it's pretty sprawling, but you don't really know how sprawling it really is until you start exploring it, and it's not really clear like which direction to go. You just, oh, hey, I found this new weapon that's going to help me defeat this other enemy so I can get through this other corridor you know, a lot more easily. Oh, hey, there's a door that you know I pressed to switch the last, you know, loop or you know like loop before that oh i can go through there now and oh it's exposed this boss fight cool you know that's kind of your sense of progress kind of reminds me of that of that sort of flow where they're very uh careful to not reveal anything to you and just sort of let you figure it out on your own but you make it very obvious to the player that they're making progress this kind of reminds me a bit of gauntlet in a way where you have a lot of different exits and a lot of things and they all kind of interact and you might just find the right way to get through something just by dumb luck. But you might not always get back to that same place where you made that change happen. I don't know. As yeah. an outsider who isn't intimately familiar with it, that's the kind of vibe that I got from it. it you're, in Gauntlet, you're still always making forward progress. Like, it's... Well, maybe not always. Well, not always. <laughs> For the most part, you know. Like, in, in the very first level, you can either go to the second level, or if you persist you can go right to level six, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. But you're going to eventually end up at level six no matter what. Yeah, there are definitely shorter and longer paths in that game. Yeah. Also, supposedly based on what class you choose if you decide to play single player. Yeah. Because that was a thing. Gauntlet 2, maybe. Yeah. That could be. Now, I, I, I really want to pull up the name of this because I would actually play this on stream. Um... Eternal Eclipse Taoyarin. That's eh. what it is. Yeah, that was my first guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, I've uh, never heard of that one, so go on. So it's, I mean, it's developed in Megazooks. So it's uh, it's a game for a game maker engine that uh, came from the mid-90s. But this, uh. is, this is something separate from ZZT, right? Yes, it was inspired by... Okay, because um, I remember those two being kind of together in conversations. Yeah, um, but it's... Uh, it's a very interesting experience because the interaction that you have uh, with others in kind of like a language way is very limited to the thing, to the little bits and pieces that you recall. I got gotcha. you. You don't really yeah. like. There's not a whole lot of dialogue to drive it along. You just sure. It's all ex- exploration essentially until you figure it out. I got gotcha. you. I, I I think I would appreciate things like that. Yeah, I'll play it for you sometime. I've never beaten it because it's actually also really difficult and very easy to die in that game. Um, because as those games are want, yeah, yeah. It, it's easy to die because like it also it's it's also an action game in that like if you come up against you know enemies that are uh, you know like they shoot projectiles and they move very quickly and stuff and you have your own essentially like lightning weapon that has unlimited charges, you just basically have to power through it and hope you don't die in the process. So. If you do, you're sent to back to the beginning of the loop and you gotta redo nope, it that's all just, over. That's just game over. Oh, that's so it, you, huh? You you are given the opportunity cool. to save at any point. Um, but if you die, that's that's it. So hmm. you gotta be really careful. Womp womp. So, yeah. Oh, okay. You can save to resume your progress, but if you die, you're done. Yes. Huh. Well. Save scumming. Yep. All right. That that's the the author explicitly mentions that it was like in the readme you are going to die a whole lot, so conserve your uh, conserve your mana essentially, and uh, and plan your route. Hmm. What was it called again? Um, gosh, I already forget the name of it. It was a long name. Yeah, it was, it was a very it is, confusing end part. Uh, Eternal Eclipse Tau Yarin, T A O Y A R I N. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's huh. a new name for me. Yeah, I will. I will link it because I always remember the last word in that, and like if I Google that, it immediately comes up. Right. It's such a unique word for something like that. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So, and the music is really cool too. Like you can download the music separately, um, because the mu like the streamed music is many times as the size of the game, because <laughs> the game is really small. Right. So. Huh. Huh? Yeah. I'll definitely stream it one of these times, though, and see if I can actually beat the damn thing. How is it lengthwise? 
you remember? Um, I yeah, really don't know. About it? I so I read through kind of like a like a guide because there's there's somewhat of a spoiler free guide ish, um, and I was kind of using that to determine about how far I was through it. Um, I played it for about uh three hours and realized I was about halfway through. Okay. And a lot of that was spent exploring. I'm pretty sure you could blow through the game pretty quickly if you knew like the the route to take and stuff. But if you're playing it for the first time and you're doing it blind, you're probably going to spend a lot of time going through loops and exploring things. Gotcha. Hmm. Now you are. Hmm. Okay. Well, that'll go on the list of to investigate. <laughs> yeah. But as to our own designs here, since we've kind of got the mindfuck design, and <laughs> let's move on to something a little bit more traditional. Shocker, it's my arcade game. Oh, shit. Arcade what? is dead, by the way. Fuck you, Harsmark. <laughs> <laughs> Leaderboards, though. Yeah. Leaderboards are very important, as are dailies. Anyways, so I've got a title to this one. It's called Fly by Night. It's kind of a Defender Choplifter mashup. Your goal is to pick up and return passengers to safety, a la Choplifter. Choplifter. Choplifter, yes. What, not what shoplifter. Not shop. No. <laughs> I was just like, what? No, no, no. Ch -ch 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 chop. Yeah. Lifter. All right, Finn. Choplifter? Slap chop. Sorry. Slap your troubles away with, with the slap choplifter. <clears throat> it's like it's, instead of trying to steal people across enemy lines, you're just stealing bags of this. <laughs> <laughs> bags of people. Anyway. Nice. Wow, Tormod. <laughs> Anyways, wow. pick up and return passengers to safety, <laughs> a la Choplifter. <laughs> Side-scrolling omnidirectional flyer, a la Defender, so you're not necessarily always going left to right, not necessarily always going right to left, not always staying on the same vertical plane, moving up and down, all around. He is side-scrolling, though. Plane. Like me some side-scrollers. And your major mechanic is the control of light. You have several forms of light that you control. You have a very narrow focus laser beam, narrow unidirectional beam with infinite distance and ultra brightness. Cooldown of 10 seconds, so it's kind of considered your weapon, so to speak, but it's not really a weapon in the typical sense that you're going around shooting stuff. No, it's really more of a utility thing. 100% chance to blind certain enemies on contact. Kills passengers on contact, so be careful where you're firing it. Hmm. It instantly burns away certain terrain. Directional beam, selectable directional light cone with moderate distance and high brightness, good for scouting out specific areas and paths. 75% ch chance to alert enemies that get caught in the cone. So they're, it, it, your, your general play field is pretty dark. Like, nobody really knows where mm. you are. You don't know really where you are, except the permanent terrain and structures are kind of very dimly visible unless you light them up. So then you know where you're going so you're not crashing into shit all the time. If you focus the directional beam for five seconds on enemies, you can blind them. Like the laser, but it's you gotta focus it a little bit more for a little bit more time, and you can focus it for five seconds on certain terrain to burn it away, unlike the instant burn away with the laser. You've got an omnidirectional light, a 360 degree light field around yourself with a pretty short distance, medium brightness, good for navigating narrow tunnels with lots of non permanent objects so you can see where you're going. 33% chance to alert enemies within the light, so you got a little bit more wiggle room. You want to toggle it on and off at will, kind of stealth around a little bit. Then you have a so-called scan ability, a 360-degree invisible light field around the player with a pretty long distance, but no brightness to it. Cooldown of 30 seconds, good for scouting out large areas of terrain and structures. 100% chance to alert enemies and passengers in the scan area. So be careful when you do it. And what, after you trigger it, you better move so they're not going to slam into you right away. Because <laughs> right. otherwise they're like, yep, boink. They're right there. Not as nice of an ass now, though. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Keep an eye on that ass. Mm. ASS. <laughs> Best dat, leaderboard score. Dat ass. <laughs> <laughs> non permanent objects, enemies, and structures will remain visible in real time for five seconds after you scan them. So you have some idea. So the other effects of using light lighting up passengers or enemies will automatically move, cause them to move towards your last known position. So, obviously, for passengers, that's good, so you can pick them up. Enemies, not so good. You don't want them to see you, shoot you down. When the light is turned off, or you move the light away from the outlines, uh, excuse me, outlines of last known positions will still show. So for permanent structures, obviously that's good. You know exactly where it is all the time. But for moving stuff, enemies, passengers, other movable terrain or objects, you kind of have an idea on where they were, but a couple seconds later it could be somewhere else. So go slow and use your light to find out. 
Certain terrain can be burned away by the laser or directional light. And certainly, certain enemies are very highly sensitive to focused light. Mm. So blinding enemies will not necessarily kill them, but they'll keep going on whatever trajectory they were on before they were bl blinded. So they can slam into ground terrain. Yep. You can kill them, so to speak, but you're not really directly killing yeah. them. So as an arcade game, it's very much focused around scoring systems, purely based off the number of passengers picked up and returned to some sort of safe point. You get bonuses for stealthing past enemies. I decided to take a, a, a page from some bullet hells, where the closer you get to enemies without them knowing that you're there, the higher your bonus score is. Nice. You get bonuses for incidental enemy destruction, blinding them so they fly into mm -hmm. shit, or burning away certain terrain that drops stuff on enemies. However, there is a huge score penalty for allowing a passenger to die, either killing directly by your own laser, uh, by the enemy slamming into him, by your player ship getting destroyed, etc. So be careful mm. with that. But other than that, that's it. Very specific, lightweight mechanics, a lot of interplay, crunchy systems, I like that sort of thing. Combo scoring? Combo scoring. If you manage to get them to, to run into each other? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Take one down. <laughs> <laughs> Pass them all around. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that sounds like a lot of fun. I would play that one. So would I, I hope. <laughs> oh. I drop a quarter in that. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, lewd. You mean <laughs> right. insert a credit? Maybe. Whoa. <laughs> Possibly more than one for double player action. Yeah. <clears throat> Multi round. <laughs> so, um, mine is kind of building on a uh, a mechanic that I discussed in a previous um, insert credits. I don't remember specifically which one it was, but um, in that uh, insert credits, um, I talked about a kind of a fighting game where um, it was played turn by turn, kind of like you know you input your combo. It might have actually mm -hmm. just been this last one. Um, so I decided to take that and um, use it as inspiration for a rhythm tactical RPG. So okay. uh? <laughs> I, I think I can make this work. So um, it, you know, with your tactical RPGs, typically there's like a battle map and your units are on the map and stuff like that. And you kind of, you know, you direct your army, your individual units, they're all, you know, a particular class or mm -hmm. have particular abilities, equipment, stats, etc. cetera. Um, and the way that you uh, do battle is um, you would essentially like, you know, you can move them into range. You have, you know, your melee guys have pretty much have to stand right up uh, against the enemy, that kind of thing. But uh, on a per class basis, there's also a different mechanic uh, that in, that will influence how effective they are at combat. So there's there's a, a constant beat going in the background. You know, it's not like you know super driving or anxiety inducing or anything like that. But you know, it's kind of like it's present. It kind of makes you feel energetic, that kind of thing. And each of these mechanics is going to rely on your ability to essentially play along to that beat. So when your so your melee guy is pretty much just going to like walk up to it uh, to you know an uh, an enemy or whatever and uh, the moment you decide to initiate contact um you know you'll hit the button and it'll count down with the beats like 3 2 1 and then like you know on the very next beat you have to like perform whatever pattern kind of shows up on the screen. You have to let slam. Huh? Welcome to the jam. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sure. So, <laughs> so you you begin the space jam, um, <laughs> and um, you win the game. There you go. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so for, that's that's what it would be for, like you know, like melee uh, fighters and stuff like that. Um, so you pretty much have to just input the combo as it comes up. Um, and for magic, you know, magic users, you kind of walk up, and it's. It's similar, but it would be presented on a different kind of field. You know, like I was thinking for melee fighters, it would sort of be like how in Taiko, it's uh, the it's right to left. So the little, you know, markers kind of come over and you have to hit them with, when they come over the indicators and stuff like that. Just like mm -hmm. any other rhythm game. With magic, um, it wouldn't um, be exactly that. It would be more like maybe like a circular thing, you know. And you have to, you know, like hold the stick in a particular direction and press the button, you know, when like the indicator comes from like the center of the circle to the outside, that sort of thing. Um, and for um, 
for like archers and stuff like that, you know, might might make use of the analog stick where you have to like position your analog stick in a very particular part. Like they would show kind of like a circle um, and, you know, a little dot indicating like, oh, this is where your stick is now. And like, you know, kind of have to tell you where you have to put it, you know, for the next beat and so on, um, you know, and you just kind of time it. And the better you are, like the more accurate you are at it, uh, the more effective the attack will be. That's not to say that, like, you know, if you totally biff it, um, your attack's going to be useless, but you'll definitely gain a bonus, um, you know, the better and, and more complex you get. And these will be um, influenced by the kinds of equipment that you equip on a character. So, like, the higher level uh, equipment that you equip your character with, the more difficult the patterns are going to be, but also the greater your potential to cause damage you know, or healing or, you know, whatever it is. Um, but uh, it wouldn't necessarily change any of the mechanics for a particular class. Uh, it would just make the, the patterns just more intense. And that's pretty much it. Um, like the, the visual I get for this is just armies of high school marching bands going at it <laughs> in turn-based fashion, like slamming each other with tubas and shit. <laughs> shit. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's right. awesome. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. It's all right. Like you get the the quad toms going. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Some dude marching in with you know like a like a trumpet, just like in that meme where like the that one uh, kid is annoying someone oh, else. Yeah. With that, <laughs> <laughs> that has been making the rounds. Right? It's so good. Or they get the marimbas on wheels. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Tactical RPG Rhythm Gaming. All right. Hmm. <laughs> I imagine that on the next Metal Gear Solid box or something. <laughs> yeah. Tactical espionage action, tactical rhythm game, game rhythm <laughs> action game, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll probably sell really well in Japan. I can see that. With their Jew beats and their DDRs <laughs> and their whatever. Yeah. Their Death Stranding. Yeah. <laughs> rhythm rhythm that. horror. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no. What have we done? Yeah. Oh, well, I mean. What has science wrought? QTEs. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very loose definition of that. Indeed. All right. Any other final notes before we pack it up for tonight? Uh, music game. No, uh, I get you. Uh, yeah, so was yeah, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> no, I think we're all good. All right, yeah. very good. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. I'm Mr. Bond. I'm Tormod. And I'm Saxon. I'll leave you with our typical closing track, a remix from Mario Kart Wii entitled Wind in Your Hair by Overclocked University. Good night, everybody. Ciao. Adios. <laughs>